Being a lizard has never been so rewarding because today in Total Warhammer 3, we are going to be parading through the streets like a group of vegan activists who just figured out that screaming at the top of their lungs is the key to winning any good argument. Only when we scream, we'll send our enemies flying in all directions with an invisible nuke. Our park ranger for today is Gorok, a pissed off burly lizard and his assistant Lord Croak, who's reminiscent of the stereotypical World of Warcraft player. To enforce our habitat conservation policies, we'll be using giant reptilians, flying monsters, and a dinosaur with a fucking laser beam strapped to its back. Standing in our way is a horde of overgrown rats and Satan himself. The goal for this video is to achieve a short victory before every endgame scenario on ultimate crisis mode, with the difficulty turned up to 200 triggers at turn 70. Can we survive the end endless hordes of our enemies and restore our wildlife sanctuary to pristine levels? Or will our enemies bring about the second coming of the extinction of the dinosaurs? Find out next time. But before we begin, I have a question for you. Do you like free stuff? If you answered no to the previous question, then I'd recommend that you check yourself into a psych ward. After that, grab your phone and download the sponsor of today's video and the very first sponsor on this channel. It's a small and pretty niche game that you've probably never heard about. Raid Shadow Legends. All right, so even if you have already heard about it, then have you actually tried it out yet? If not, then use the link in my description or the QR code in the top left corner and download the game. For the very first time ever, Raid is offering real life prizes. You can win a free gaming console and Amazon gift cards with a total value of $10,000 and also some in-game loot like legendary champions or skill terms. But wins you say? How can I go about winning this? Well my friend, I'm glad you asked. Raid Shadow Legends are celebrating the arrival of Spring in Teleria with a special Spring Hunt mini game. Simply download Download Raid using my link in the description and then head to bringhunt.plarium.com and enter your Raid ID. To go along with this, Raid is also celebrating Community Weeks, a six week long celebration of Raid's jolly community of anarchists. With this, everyone is going to get the legendary champion, Chronicler Adeline. She's well versed in the ancient ways of talking her enemies to sleep, allowing you to ambush them while they're tucked into their chinny chin chins. Just log in for seven Seven days between April 11th and July the 8th. There is 14 days of rewards in total, including a perfect soul for Adeline. But wait, there's more. Click the link in my description or scan the QR code in the top left corner to download the game. And you'll get a huge starter pack with an epic champion, Tyrell from the High Elf faction. And you'll get another starter pack after reaching level 25 that includes an epic Rector Draft. And you can only get these through using my link. After downloading, use this code for even more cool stuff. Personally, I enjoy blowing off steam on Raid by spending my commuting time extinguishing deplorable fire demons. Oh, and we also have ourselves a clan. So come and join my clan, the Warband. Thanks to Raid for sponsoring. Now back to the video. All right, with all of that out of the way, bloodthirsty lizards and toads conserving their habitat, let's roll. Okay, so in Gorok's campaign, we have a number of objectives that we need to complete first in order to get a short victory. Now we need to dispel all of these factions right here and capture 30 settlements. Now this campaign is a little bit different than my others in the fact that we basically have a timer to complete this because once it hits turn 70 to 80 we are pretty much fucked. Gorok's campaign is it's a pretty crazy one in the fact that we get this guy right here Lord Croak who actually starts with all of his legendary artifacts from the first turn. So this guy is an absolute killing machine, not to mention his nukes. So for our first battle, we're taking on deformed college students riddled with chlamydia. It's going to be extremely easy to level up Lord Croak because all we're going to do is increase his potential for mass destruction. Usually it's going to be a 
bit harder for me to decide what to do at the start of a campaign, but because we're so unbelievably strong, we're just gonna attack this faction straight away. We actually don't need to use the majority of our army at the start because we can just save a lot of our uh, losses by just sending in Gorok and Lord Croak on their own because they work extremely well together. Gorok is pretty much just an absolute tank and Lord Croak has some of the best AOE spells in the game. The general tactic is going to be the old hammer and anvil strategy. We send in Gorok and some other beefy units to hold them in place and then we blast them to oblivion with our morbidly obese toad. And we're going to use this ability right here which increases Gorok's physical resistance by 40% which is crazy. We can also buff him again and get another 40% damage resistance with Lord Croak which is just absolutely insane. Here we go. Oh my freaking god. Gorok is still just chilling over here by himself, just taking on basically an entire army. Look at these fat asses that are just getting absolutely dismantled right now by a bloody Gorok. Okay, we had one loss. How is that not heroic? That's what I want to know. Top 10 greatest robberies of all time. Okay, and with that, we have successfully captured our first piece of land. Now, one mechanic that we are going to have to take advantage of in this campaign is the geomantic web. Now, the geomantic Geomantic web basically makes commandment stronger the further your web goes. So in order to increase this, we have to get the geomantic buildings, as you can see here. So the rough plan is to expand south and start taking up all of this land down here. Once we do that, we're going to start to expand east and then start to set our sights on the north. Fat methods tend to be the bane of my existence, but Gorok's more abrasive methods of diplomacy manage to convince that fat bastard into taking up exercise. Now we got yet another decisive victory in which we only lost 13 men. Now if I look at the victory conditions, that is the first of the four factions that we need to dispel from the world in order to get the short victory. So we're off to a good start. If you ignore the fact that we are in a city that smells like literal shit. And with that, we have our first commandment available. I think for this one, we're going to go with the building one because the construction time negative one for all buildings is cracked hmm these guys might declare war on us Jesus, have you ever considered counseling? After pumping our bodies full of high cholesterol and diabetes, we can now turn our attention towards the animal kingdom's equivalent to a bare scrotum with limbs. Now, if you thought your apartment was bad, did you have literal feces leaking from the ceiling? Got a rat problem? Call Lord Croak on 99999. I love killing fucking rats. Oh, they're getting budged up. Oh my God. <laughs> And with that fight, we are starting to see just how broken Lord Croak actually is. He got 439 kills, and I probably only used about five spells. Just completely upgrade his nukes, and uh, yeah, Lord Croak is going to be an absolute behemoth to deal with at the start of any campaign. We should probably start just getting some more units over here. Blessed spawnings. Oh, isn't that nice? It better not be war. A non-aggression pact. Oh, beautiful. All right, these guys have definitely declared war war on me. Look at that. Negative 105. Yep. Decisive victory. Thank God we finally get low casualties. Get out of here and we're going to occupy this again. Luther Harkin has come down to destroy our close relatives. That's not good. We should probably be building up some men here then. You know, I really can't say I didn't see this coming, but what I can say is I'm going to come. You know what's incredibly bad for the environment? Dead people. So we're going to wipe him out. How's Gorok going right here? He's doing relatively well. About as well as you could be doing, surrounded by a bunch of dead zombies and guys with literal tentacles coming out of their fucking chest. Right there is going to get an absorbent amount of kills. Oh my god. <laughs> You know, I think the rotting flesh of our enemies isn't really helping them stand up to Gorok, who has near impenetrable skin. This dinosaur is killing these guys so hard right now that he's making them all levitate above him. What is going on? <laughs> 
Guys, we've officially broken the game right now. What is going on? With that, we're going to kill and eat our enemies because nothing screams a well-balanced and healthy diet like the consumption of decaying skin. We've now upgraded all of Lord Croak's nukes as much as we can, meaning bigger explosion and more death. So we're about to do the unthinkable. We're about to break bread with the French. All right, Gorok, march your ass down there. Kill these freaking rat bastards. Oh my God, hold on. It's a new faction. We are going to declare war on our neighboring rats. Yes, we don't care. Get a decisive victory down here. This is very annoying because, uh, yeah, we're in a dire money situation at the moment. Could have a military alliance with these guys. All right, we've got our first ally. Oh my God. Our feisty reptilian boys are going to have to put on an absolute shift to take out a hairless master splinter and his army of walking ball sacks. Lord Croak and Gorok seem to be in some sort of weird partnership in which Croak gives Gorok free spa and bathing treatments. Only his liquid of choice is the red excrement of his enemies. Gorok, who obviously prioritizes his beauty regime, happily obliges because he needs to keep every inch of his scaly body heavily moisturized if he wants to get himself some Liz Puss. Oh my god, Croak is on 560 kills already. This is just insane, man. Oh my god. And they are bunched up like you've never seen rats bunched up before, so this should get a whole bunch of kills. Oh my god, and that was only the first freaking one. Log Croak's almost on a thousand kills right now. This is insane. And we can get a whole bunch more kills right here. We're on 845 now. Lord Croak is like single-handedly just eradicating them. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, what a freaking fight that was. Lord Croak got 1,347 kills in that fight. Talk about being overpowered. And even Gorok got himself respectably almost 300 kills. So we have gotten rid of two of the four factions that we need to dispel from the world in order to get the victory. And we've got six out of 30. So we're actually going pretty well. Yeah, we just got to be mindful of that turn 70 happening. Oh shit, we did not see this. I did not see this coming. Now, after a string of crushing defeats, at least I can still say that we are balling out of our minds. If your definition of balling constitutes living out of my mother's basement on a diet of three rat bones. But as all good stories go, this was the dip before our rise. And oh boy, did we rise faster than morning wood at eight o'clock on a Sunday. We marched down and met three rat armies at once, with Total War Simulator predicting a defeat. And whether out of pure spite for testicular abominations or the lack of brain power to even form a coherent sentence, we decided to take them on. There are so many Skaven rat units. Holy shit. All right, here comes Lord Croak right on top of Gorok's head. I wonder what Gorok thinks about this. Oh my god. Gorok doesn't seem to care about having a nuke dropped on top of his head every five seconds. He just kind of, he keeps going. Here we have our lizard boys versus a bunch of crack cocaine addicted rats. Can these guys do backflips because they're lizards or they're lizards who just know how to do backflips? This guy's been bulking his entire life, man, on a diet of rats. Rats. This is what Gorok does as his leisurely time. It's what helps him uh, unwind for the day. Just covering himself in a plethora of different rat blood while getting pelted from the sides. He does not seem to mind. In fact, I'd actually say he's in his element. How do you even begin to freaking combat all these numbers, man? Here we go. Lord Croak again. Straight on top of these guys. Oh my god! <laughs> that took out everybody. Look at the death. There's like only one one lizard unit in a whole entire graveyard of rat bodies. I love how Gorok's animation is just the equivalent of him bitch slapping the enemy. This is so fun to look at. Just watching a bunch of dinosaurs completely rip through a bunch of fucking rats. Oh, and Lord Croak wants to join in the fun too. Lord Croak would be really good at uh, starting a mosh pit. So not only were we outnumbered basically six to one, but Lord Croak got 1,488 
eight kills by himself. Lord Croak is freaking important in this campaign. Now, one thing you always have to remember when fighting the Skaven is that these rat fuckers breed faster than people from Jersey with an unlimited supply of alcohol. Just want to fight against three armies to your one? That's great. Now, fight another three armies the very next turn. Now, although they have a ridiculous numerical advantage to us, we have the ultimate Skaven counter, and it comes in the form of a fat toad sitting in his gamer chair. Well, we survived by the skin of our freaking teeth there, man. We lost over half our army, but Lord Croak once again coming in clutch with 915 kills. This guy is a absolute beast. It's a new day. It's still more rats though. Oh my God, this could be perfect. If we set up a freaking bottleneck right here, this map could be something special. All right, yep, let's just get an absolute bottleneck going on here. Put all of our units over here. Oh yes, look at them, look at them. All right, Croak, just destroy them. 10 kills right now, 122. <laughs> I like this bottleneck that we've got formed. I don't know what they're doing, marching these catapults into our fucking army. It's not the best decision they've ever made, I'll be honest, but you know, it is what it is. And where's gonna hurt them the most? I think right here will do a nice amount of damage. I think that worked very well. Okay, that was just a ridiculous fight right there. So in that fight, we only lost 19 men and we killed 795 of them. And of course, Lord Croak, the star of this campaign, has got himself a nice 515 kill battle. And for some reason, Gorok and his weird reptilian army has some type of affinity towards wanting to get AIDS and chlamydia all in one by eating expired testicles. Now, while we've been out valiantly slaughtering thousands of rats, Johnny the Boot Snatcher has managed managed to sneak into our lands undetected and stolen a province from us. So now that these rats are dead, we have to turn our focus to the vampire coast and more specifically stop Johnny from stealing our Jordans. Oh, all right. We can get these guys to join our confederation. Just like that, Gorok can expand his reptilian armada. All right, let's get these guys and let's march on them straight away. We've got to take back our territory, goddammit. A close defeat, they think. This is going to be one of the few battles that we have to fight without the overpowered combo of Gorok and Lord Croak. Although we don't have Gorok and Croak, I still think our lizard boys are going to be going okay. Besides the fact that they're getting fucking bombed to oblivion right now. Oh my goodness. But for the most part, they should be a lot stronger than uh, literal walking corpses. And if all else fails, we still have our uh, giant dino boys who can just charge through these guys like they're a knife through butter. I mean, if we had Croak right now, we would be absolutely destroying this huge bulb here, but we don't, so we have to rely on some actual strategic capabilities. Well, it wasn't easy, but our 800 men took out their 3,000, and we've snatched our fucking province back from Johnny the goddamn crutch sniffer. Alright, now with Gorok here, we're gonna march down and take out the last remaining scave in province. Okay, awesome. And we didn't lose a single unit. Oh my god, Gorok got 500 kills. Why is Gorok be- Oh my god, this fucking turtle unit got 747 kills. That is insane. After a back and forth tussle with some pissed off corpses in the north, a bunch of schizophrenic rats from the east decided to take six months of swimming classes for the sole purpose of enraging me into a blood curdling induced spontaneous combustion. Like Luckily for us though, our reptilian soldiers are well versed in the ancient art of ripping apart limbs and tearing out eyes from their sockets. Unfortunately, this Reddit moderator who hasn't shaved in years has climbed out of his hole and proceeded to scalp us. All right, let's go and see what happens here. A valiant defeat, it thinks. Oh my God, there are so many of them. It's not even funny. You can probably help this guy out. Yeah, a whole bunch. Oh yes, that's huge damage. Oh, look at this epic last stand, man. Oh my God. Just a giant dinosaur getting flooded by rats. Well, it was a valiant effort. Our 600 men managed to take down 1,700 of them. After declaring our third war on the budget of a McDonald's teenage employee, we discovered that our masochistic desire for being triple teamed on all sides wasn't exactly an optimal war strategy. It turns out that actually having the money we require to 
fund our psychotic blood rituals would go a long way in helping the habitat conservation cause. So with this new emphasis on idolizing Warren Buffett, we built a f ton of money-making buildings. Oh, and we also established trade with our fat cousins in the north fat fucks. We also spent our time gobbling up as much land as possible to give us more opportunities to tax the peasants on every slice of bread they own. All the while being stalked by this decrepit, senile old man who just will not leave us alone. We continued our conquest of the angry short men. Right before the battle, we had a quick reptilian orgy as we waited for our winds of magic to fill. This battle basically consisted of us throwing around hundreds of small statues men. Okay, so it was a bit more of a chill battle there from old Lord Croak, the big fat fucking toad. He only got 180 kills, but unsurprisingly, even though he had an off day, he still got the most kills in our entire army. We have now reached the official halfway point. We have 15 out of the total 30 provinces that we need to capture, and we are on turn 36. So that turn 70 to turn 80 D-Day is approaching rapidly. We need to keep that in the back of our mind because the world is going to flip as soon as that happens. Yeah, we'll win that, I reckon. So let's go and march over there. Yep, a Pyrrhic victory, it thinks. Wow. Well, we're gonna do it anyway. Holy shit, we lost a lot of men there. Occupy that. Oh my goodness, man. I didn't even see this guy. That is gonna do some serious damage unless these guys can fucking help us out, which they definitely can. Attack that guy for me. Oh my God, that could help me. There it is. Hill Kick has come back to destroy us. These fucking rats, man. This guy is gonna start absolutely destroying us on the coast eating us up oh my god why would this guy do that all right give us the money for that and with that battle we have destroyed the spine of the sotek dwarves i wonder if we can take this province Let's see. A Pyrrhic victory, but we can't auto-resolve it. All right, well, we can get one battering ram in one turn. Wow. We are on Struggle Street over here. All right, Gorok, get your ass down there. Help out. You've got an insane army. Time to put it to use. I just realized it's turn 40 and we still don't have a single cav unit. We should probably get that. Look who it is, guys. Of course you want peace. Absolutely fucking not. Get out of here, man. After some long drawn out fights with some more pesky rotten pirates, we gain the upper hand by violently sending them back to where they came from, six feet under. We stormed them, Blitzkrieg style. Hello, we'd like to talk to you about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And captured their last remaining settlement, finally putting an end to the eyesore that is Luther Harkon. After handling business with the Vampire Coast, we turned our attention to... <sighs> Yeah, more rats. For someone that talks so much about habitat conservation, Gorok sure is doing everything in his power to wipe these jittery crackheads from the face of this miserable world. And that's exactly what we did. After destroying both the dead and the overgrown ball sacks, we can put our attention onto more important matters, like destroying the French. The French broke their non-aggression pact with me. So naturally, I decided to break a baguette over my knee and violently force feed them their own culture. But first, we have some other loose ends to tie up. And surely we win this. Yes, we can take this back with relative ease. Gorok and Croak have leveled up yet again. So not only is Croak an absolute absurd beast, but he's now going to be able to heal himself with the transcendent healing perk. And Gorok, he's going to have the ability to regenerate too. This campaign is getting utterly ridiculous. And with that, the very last faction that we needed to destroy is ticked off the list. We have destroyed all four of these factions. So now we only need another 11 provinces. And we're basically at turn 50 here. We have about 20 turns until doomsday. I only just realized, but our allies have carved out a piece of land in between our lands that is literally shaped like a penis. All right, so we are going to attempt to do the story mission, the Shield of Aeons, which is gonna give us 5,000 gold casualty replenishment rates, and the Shield of Aeons, which is a legendary item that makes Gorok even more tanky. Oh yes, we're versing a bunch of Skaven rats again. So this fight was a bit harder than you'd expect. No, not because it's crawling with thousands of rats and vampires, but for some ungodly reason, the devs decided that you have to protect your allies' lives and if they die, then you flat out lose the battle. Because of this, I sent half of my army sprinting 10 kilometers over the battlefield like their lives depended on it. Once I'd managed to reinforce my utterly pathetic hindrances. <laughs> 
I mean allies, I could focus on my meditation and chakra healing by blowing up a f ton of abominable creatures. Now, once again, Lord Croak single-handedly carried our scaly asses to victory. Our faction is a little bit like the French, and Croak, Napoleon. Without him, well, there's nothing we can do. With all of this out of the way, I was able to begin preparations for my war against the beret-wearing Dominion. Surprisingly, it seemed as though they hadn't just been sitting around, waving white flags and screaming, Chocolate bleu, where is me, mama? Because they were strength rank 12, which was higher than our own faction. This slightly startled me. But then I quickly remembered that they were just French, so I declared war on them and quickly gobbled up two provinces on their border that had no protection. Through the new war with the French, our men became reinvigorated, and Croak even reached a higher state of consciousness. Now, this war was going just about as good as it possibly could have. We were taking land faster than the Chinese government, and doing so with relatively little loss. We literally captured five provinces from them before they even sent an army down to defend. This war was becoming Becoming so embarrassing for the French that I actually kind of pitied them in some weird way. So, just to make things more interesting, I marched Gorok down into two of their armies. Now, honestly, they weren't doing too bad at getting blown to pieces. Even though French food isn't my cuisine of choice, Gorok and his park rangers didn't want to leave anything to waste. After obliterating two armies at once, the only logical next step is to take on three. Gorok had a taste of fine dining, eating roast snails, and he wasn't about to stop. This is the make or break fight of the entire campaign. All right, charge in there, man. Charge in there. Look at these stegodons go. Just ripping apart poor little French men. Gorok doesn't even care about these guys standing in his way. Look at him. He's just like, oh, everyone get out of the way, man. I'm trying to get through here. Can't you see, guys? Oh, yes, we've killed their lord. Look at these crocs. They are absolutely covered in blood. Holy shit. So is Gorok. I didn't even see Gorok down there. Look at these guys, man. And it is not their own blood. I can guarantee you that. Yes, yes. Run. Run away, you poor sorry sods. I don't even know why you showed up to the battle. You know, although we got a Pyrrhic victory there, we did just take on an army that is four times our size. And we only lost 140 men. That's when you start to realize just how insanely overpowered Lord Croak is. I mean, to have a unit that can consider consistently get between 700 to 1000 kills per battle is just insane and we're gonna get our first t-rex unit oh yes Although we were on top of the world right now, destroying the French, we couldn't let it get to our heads. Turn 70 was approaching, and fast. Lord Croak has almost got every single buff on him that he possibly can. The only thing that is remaining is the Mentor, which will be available at rank 30, which doesn't actually even buff him. It just gives other people experience. So we've buffed him to the living shit. We only need one more province until we attain the short victory. And we we have seven turns to do so. We're going to do it, lads. We are going to do it. And we're going to march our army, our park ranger number four, down here to capture the very last province. It's a Pyrrhic victory, but we don't care. And with that battle won... We have achieved the short victory for Gorok and his reptilian boys. But that's not it, because we're going to keep going. The objective has now changed. We're going to see how long we can last with the unending waves of enemies knocking on our front door. So, with the objective changed from domination to survival, we prepared ourselves for what's to come. An orgy of various disgusting monstrosities who all have a degree in sales. We built up our armies and captured as much land as we could near the borders of the Chinese Communist Party to ensure they wouldn't attack us whilst we were weakened. The French mounted another pitiful attempt at surviving with a peace treaty, which I quickly tore up. We were as ready as we were ever going to be. All that was left was for the ultimate crisis mode to kick in. Oh my god, this is it. This is the end. It has all happened at once. Oh my goodness. What have we got ourselves into? Ladies and gents, we could be fucked here. And just like that, we were at war with what seemed like the world. 
flying monster creatures, drug dealing rats, angry orcs, you name it. Everyone was out for our blood. Oh no, what is this? Oh my god, we have three 20 stack units right here. Oh my goodness, this is not gonna go down well. How did I not see that? Alright, let's declare war on these fuckwits. Yep, we're doing it, we're doing it. We strike first blood and let's get as much money from that as we can. Repair both of these. Oh no. Oh no. They're about to fucking kill us. Uh, we need some war coordination. You need to attack them. Thank you very much. Oh my god. We have enemies everywhere, man. Holy shit. Look at these guys, man. Oh no. There's two 20 stack armies there. I'm sensing the beginning of the end, lads. Yep. There's another province. Oh my god. Land after land. Oh my god, so many factions just got destroyed. Unfortunately for us, Gorok was miles away when the Skaven invasion started. So we had to march him down in order to stand any chance at all against these rats. Oh my fuck. Well, we've lost a lot of land down here. We no longer hold any of these provinces. And the Skaven have hit us hard in the middle of our uh, territory there. Uh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Oh my god, both. Both forces are going to spawn at the same point. <laughs> You know, just when you thought this battle couldn't get any worse, my reinforcements are spawning in between two of their armies. Like, look at this shit, man. They've got their whole army here, and then bang, they've instantly got a sandwich. You know, at least we have giant protecting outer layers. Um, guys, what the fuck is this? These lizard boys are not having a fun time with this end game crisis mode. Oh, uh, here we have the uh, the new badass units. Hell yeah. But a whole bunch of these new units too. They're uh, a lot more heavily armored lizards. You know, I'm, I'm happy that we have a lot stronger units for this. Otherwise, we could have been, uh, we really could have been fucked. Uh, I don't think this is healthy for any creature. Oh my god, we won. What a clusterfuck of a fight. So we managed to hold off Master Splinter and we're gonna exterminate them because fuck them. Oh my god, no. Another one. There's like 10 battles each turn. Oh my god, there's so many Skaven undercities. Almost all of our provinces have an undercity in them. Look at that. Undercity, undercity, undercity. We're losing ground. Even though we're winning fights, we're still losing ground. All right, can we win that? If we go down there and if we fight them, I think we can. Pyrrhic victory. We're gonna go ahead and take it. All uh, we're occupied. We took some land back. Holy shit. This campaign is heating up, boys. They're coming back. The scavered rats are killing us all. Oh, no. There's three of them. Oh, okay. We lost that. Honestly, I just want to get Gorok's army down here to see how Gorok goes. Oh, my fuck. God. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. I am fucked. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 10, 20 stack Skaven armies right there. There's nothing I can do. There's literally, what, what am I able to do with that? Yeah, ultimate crisis mode is ridiculous. And there's another army over there too. It's fair enough to say that that settlement is lost. There is five full stack armies waiting to destroy it. Oh, we can actually get Gorok down there to help reinforce. That's good. You know, that actually wasn't as, oh my God. Yes, it was because now they're going to attack all of these places down here. All right, let's march you down along with you and Gorok can go and uh, Gorok can go and do the heavy lifting down there. This is about to be the most insane battle ever. I just realized we haven't actually uh, fought with the uh, the dinosaur units in here yet. So we have the, the Pale Death right here, which is our regiment of renowned unit. And we also have this colorful boy right here. Damn, these, yeah, the units look actually pretty cool. Oh, and we have uh, this dino boy right here, the big bad T-Rex. I mean, one thing that'll never never get old is seeing a t-rex rip apart rats and what even is this creature man holy shit it's so beautiful that it kills you <laughs> I mean, there's no doubt that the unit design in this game is unbelievable. Oh, and here we have Croak. Yep, doing his thing. Keep going, Croak. Don't stop doing you, buddy. Yep, just more uh, giant dinosaurs destroying more rats. I mean, what's new? There are so many rats here, it's not even funny. Look at this. The battlefield is just chaotic. Look at these rats running. Our dinosaurs have won the day. Oh my God. 
They deployed an extra 200 troops, but we only lost 459. Lord Croak, by holy Jesus, Lord Croak got 773 kills. He's made to fight the Skaven rats. Oh my god, Gorok is not gonna lose this to fucking this testicle looking fuck. All right, so we've just spawned a Slanesh mage over here. Slanesh mage is doing bits, man. Oh my god, this battlefield is utter chaos. There are so many spells and so much shit happening at one time right now. I don't even know what to look at. Look at Croak. Here we go. All right. I guess we'll look at that. Oh my god. What is going on? I think this is the most I've seen Gorok struggle at a fight. Straight after this fight, our weakened 181 men got ambushed by another 2,000 rats. At this point, I was absolutely done with fighting rats. So I order resolved it and I put this campaign to an end. After fighting battle after battle with no end in sight for the rats, even after Croak killed thousands in every battle, it was done. We were wiped out and Gorok and Croak's reign came to an end. End. Thanks for watching. If you haven't downloaded Raid Shadow Legends yet, then click the link in my description or scan the QR code in the top left corner and start playing now. If you made it this far, then God do I love you. We've got a Discord, so join that with the link in my description. Also, I've started channel memberships, so if you want another way to support me, then consider becoming a member. That's all for this one, guys. I'll see you in the next one.